Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. It's uh, it's almost 2 a.m. and I can't sleep. And it's because I currently have a business that is uh, trying to screw me over. And I just can't deal with it anymore. I've, I've got to... Uh, at least be vocal about some of it. So anyway, um, I'm going to call this video Bad Business. And if I take a little bit longer telling the story, it's because I'm looking for accuracy on every single angle of the story. So please bear with me. It's 2 a.m. I haven't slept yet. And if it takes me longer to tell the story, then so be it. So what happened is um, the week before Christmas, in fact, um, it would be the Thursday before the week before Christmas. So I was with the members of Phoebe, uh, the management team, and we were having our management meeting, going over our goals and what we want to happen for 2023. And I got this call from a rather large, I thought, uh, company out in Southern California. And this company uh, called me personally and reached out to see if I could help them with an emergency that they had. What this company had done is they had sold a rather large quantity of infusion pumps, Alaris pumps, to a hospital, and they had a deadline that was fast encroaching. In fact, it was only a week or two away. And they reached out to me to see if I could deploy several technicians to help them out. And I talked with them on the phone. Um, we had a couple different short conversations, and they wanted me to talk about how many pumps theoretically each technician could cover. I mean, Ed, my technicians have done many infusion pump projects. They know every single step of the process. They know exactly how long it takes, but there are certain things that happen to infusion pumps that completely change the output of each technician. And um, one of them is repairs. And they wanted me to quote how long or how many pumps each technician could do if we needed to repair the pumps to make sure that they were perfect to do a software update on the pumps and to do a preventive maintenance on the pumps how many pumps if all three things had to be done how many pumps could be done per day per technician well, that would be like asking an auto mechanic to go out into a parking lot and say, how many cars do you think you can fix in a day? What's wrong with them? <laughs> it's, it's not that easy. Now, what I did say is that I personally, from my experience, when doing a preventive maintenance on these types of Alaris infusion pumps, I personally can do about 60 per day because you had, I, I, I remember doing a spreadsheet and there was six columns of 10 or something like that. And the reason it was 60 per day is because you had to do um, 60 per infusion pump set. So that's what was allowed per Alaris infusion pump set. And then you had to change out the calibration set. And the math was almost there. It was almost perfect. 60 per day. However, there's one other thing that they wanted. So they didn't just want repairs. And then they wanted the um, software update and then the calibration. They also wanted separate paperwork for each and every pump with line items for all the parts that were changed out, etc., for that pump. I know what some of you guys are thinking. 
I just instantly doubled the time that it's going to take to do each and every pump if I have to itemize every single thing that was done to that specific pump. Um, and, but that was the requirements. And unfortunately, some of those requirements, the details, didn't come about until the team was on the ground. Since I'm saying the team was on the ground, that means that, yes, we did commit to helping. But it wasn't that simple. You see, uh, when I talked to the team, um, then I had another conversation with this company. And again, they wanted me to commit to some sort of numbers per technician. And I said, no, um, I, I would rather not even help with it. What I can specify is how many hours we can commit each technician for that week. And the statement of work actually says this. The statement of work says that we will commit three technicians times 45 hours per technician um, over the course of um, four or five days. So that's all it was, is how many technicians, how many hours, and that's all the statement of work committed. Um, and that's what we quoted. And that, that's the only way that I was going to accept this job. Well, um, luckily it happened on a day that my entire team was sitting there at this table. Because what we ended up doing is we instantly had a war party. And that is where I task one person, you check for flights and the prices. You check for rental cars. I want you to check for lodging. And I'm going to um, check to see if we had the technicians available. And we did. As a team, we all came together. And within an hour, we had quotes for everything. You know, how much it was going to cost us. And we were able to send over a quote at the very end of this entire process to, for this company to verify and to sign off, to which they did send us a PO. Now, here's something that you guys should know, is when a company sends over a PO, they're agreeing to the terms of the quote. That's it. You're agreeing to the terms of the quote when you send a PO. Yeah, some things might be negotiable later, but that is up to the discrepancy of the contractor, not the contractee. Okay? So, um, anyway, we did commit and we did send a team to Southern California. So that, mind you, that was a Thursday. We sent over the quote, I think, Friday morning. And my team was in the air that weekend, the weekend before Christmas. So we had one whole week before Christmas. That's pretty important for pretty big reasons. One, it's really tough on technicians. It's a very last minute request. Last minute requests are always tough on technicians and families. Um, and two, flights and lodging are exceedingly expensive. The week of Christmas, is the most expensive time of the year to travel, hands down. But that was all part of the quote because, you know, it's the way it is. You need an emergency request for three guys to be deployed on the other side of the country. It's going to be expensive. So anyway, one of the agreed on terms is that there was already workstations set up. And this company, you know, the reputation is that they do this kind of work all the time. And if I said the name of the company, you would all be like, oh, yeah, well, of course they do. They've done that stuff for years. Well, here's the thing is when my technicians got on site, the workstations are not set up. In fact, it took an entire morning to get this workstation set up and get the workflow going. You would think that they'd just show up and start working at a bench that's already part of the workflow. But that wasn't what happened at all. Um, I deployed my technicians with my test equipment. Um, and that was because I wanted to be more specific. I mean, we're running out of time. So they were familiar with my test setup, <clears throat> my test equipment, and they deployed with that. It's a good thing they did because when my technicians got on site, the setups that were being used by this company 
they were using uh, only single channel USB um, to serial. And when you do that, you can only test one pump at a time. We were using a special setup which had multiple serials running at the same time so you could test multiple pumps. Well, most companies, I would think, most hospitals that do this stuff professionally, they already know this. They already know how to, how to get the maximum efficiency. Um, come to find out, uh, a lot of the pumps needed a lot of love. In fact, the company wanted all pumps that were processed by my team to be to look like they're brand new and obviously what normally would account for a acceptable pump during a hospital PM and we want it to look like brand new are two different things so um, what happened is this company bought a bunch of used pumps off of whatever marketplace from whoever and then they wanted them fixed up upgraded the latest software and then PM'd and then they, they sold them off to hospitals as almost like refurbished pumps. Well, if you sell something as a refurbished pump, it is certainly going to take a little bit longer than just doing a preventive maintenance and maybe a, a quick repair. Um, refurbished means you go through pretty much everything. If you have like corroded IUI ports and stuff, that all gets changed out and I mean, that all takes extra time, right? If the cases even have a crack in it, it's gonna get changed out because that's refurbished. Whereas in a hospital, uh, if it's just a hairline fracture in a case or something, it might be okay. I don't know, it depends on the crack, right? But if you want the pump to look like absolutely brand new, you're changing out quite a few parts. And that drastically slows down the process. Well, first day, company called me back. They were not happy. Um, my techs were not doing enough pumps. Well, that's because they had to teach this company's technicians how to do a more efficient process. So they, they used my test equipment, my setup, and taught this company, who you all know, they taught this company how to do it more efficiently. And... Um, so they basically took information from my team to make their own processes better. And my team took time to show them how we do it. And then they, they ran through a bunch of pumps. And then I talked to my team and my team was extremely stressed because apparently like the, the people on site had um, told them that they're not working fast enough and made it seem like they were incompetent. Um, but here they didn't have the workstation set up or anything. But anyway, me and my team, we worked through it throughout the week. Um, the, the company did commit five of their technicians in order to meet the quota that they said that I agreed to, sight unseen. Um, they had to commit five of their technicians to meet that quota by the end of the week. Now, one of the things that's interesting is when we first talked about this, we talked about a two-week job. We talked about the week before Christmas, and then redeploying the week after Christmas. Somehow, this company decided that our quote was too expensive, and they decided that they want to get it all done in one week, somehow. Uh, we initially talked about a two-week quote. Well, they no longer were interested in a second week. And what ended up happening is they stressed my technicians for that week. That's not even the bad business part of this, all right? We understand that when you have to quote it based on hours and not based on per pump, that there's going to be efficiency issues and questions. There always is because people are going to be questioning, like, why is it that you can only get this quantity of pumps? But here's the fact of the matter. It's sight unseen. We had no idea what we're walking into. And that same analogy that I talked about earlier about walking into a parking lot and saying, how many can you get fixed in a day? How many cars can you fix in a day? What's wrong? If you don't know what's wrong, I mean, if it's just a preventive maintenance, that's one thing. Any company can quote you on how many they can do per day if they're readily available and they're sitting here in a pile. But um, when you're talking repairs plus the software upgrades and everything, no, you're, you're, and, and then here's the kicker. 
every single night, my technicians took the lists of items that they did, and they were up until, they said, 9 or 10 o'clock each night processing each and every pump that that technician touched with paperwork. So they spent the maximum amount of time there with hands-on equipment until it was the end of the duty day. And then they went back to their hotel rooms and then they got online and they were processing the paperwork through uh, our CMMS system till nine or 10 o'clock at night. And that was also stressing my technicians. So it wasn't just the hours that they were there, the 10 hours per day. They also went home and continued working at home to get the paperwork, which was another thing that this company wanted. So um, the team went and they did the job. I guess they got the quota that they needed uh, with the five extra technicians committed to the job. And then this company started ghosting us. Started ghosting us on payment. Here's where the bad business part comes in, guys. And... Um, this is where I am personally affected because when this job came down the pipeline and they called my personal cell phone, to, this wasn't just a LinkedIn request, hey Justin, can you help me or something? No, they called my cell phone and reached out to me because I, I know a lot of people and they said, hey Justin, we need some help. Well, based on the, the reputation of this company, the other people in that room did not want to go forward with this job. They said it's too soon, there's too many unknowns, it's gonna be an expensive job, they don't want to do it, and they were worried that this company wasn't gonna pay because this company has a slight reputation in the industry. Well, that's where I step forward because if you guys know me and, and you know my goals for this entire industry, one of my major goals is that I want to create a community, a community where businesses help businesses and where technicians help technicians. And that's why I do all the stuff that I do is because it's one of those lead by example, right? If somebody is calling me personally saying we are in a situation, we need some help. I'm going to take the extra steps to try and help you guaranteed even the week before Christmas. Even if my technicians don't want to go, I'm going to take the extra steps to help you. Well, come to find out, my company was right. They haven't paid us, and today is, today is April 26th. It's April 26th. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, April 6th, April 26th. And um, to this day, they haven't paid. There's been multiple phone conversations. My accounting people would call them and whatnot, and they just quit answering the calls. They quit answering emails. They're not talking. And then last week, I reached out to some of the people that called me and said, what's going on? You're burning a bridge here. What's going on? Because now you're making me look bad. And if you guys know, one of my rules of repair, which is a sign up here on my wall, is that image is everything. And that includes my image with my own company. You're burning me. And if you burn me, I will burn you to the ground. So help me God. You burn me when you called me the week before Christmas and asked for help and now you're refusing to pay and what they're doing right now they're they're refusing to pay and they're trying to negotiate or bully us into accepting a less quantity and their reasoning they, they gave me a, a bunch of reasons one of the reasons they said uh, that my technicians were unable to fulfill the quantity of pumps that I committed to per day to which I was adamant that if it came down to a per pump per tech day, we weren't going to do the job at all. And that's because we had never seen these. For all I know, they bought just a pile of parts off of eBay or whatever else, and they wanted us to make them into perfectly good pumps. I don't know. 
For all I know, these pumps could have sat for an entire year in a warehouse and everything was corroded. I don't know. And in fact, it's probably likely that a lot of this happened because if you're buying a whole bunch of Alaris pumps on the used market, what you're doing is you're getting somebody's garbage. Probably because they're still in use everywhere. So the statement of work is the commitment. It's the contract. And our statement of work was 45 hours per technician times three technicians. The end. So they tried saying that my technicians couldn't commit, they didn't make the quantity, and they sent it in writing to me, the, their list of reasons why. They also said that they had to commit, commit five of their technicians on top of my three technicians in order to meet the quotas. What quota? It was supposed to be a two-week project. They only wanted it done one week all of a sudden. And then this quota, what quota? I, I just don't understand that. The statement of work doesn't mention that at all. And if they didn't commit to the statement of work, then why did they give me a PO? Why did they go through the process? Why did they say okay to having my guys shipped out there? Why did they even let them in the door? It's because they needed help. And I came out there and I helped them. And they're trying to bully me right now into accepting a less dollar figure. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, sorry if that seems like it was a drawn out story, but there might be a few other details, but if it takes five of your employees plus the three of mine in order to meet this magical quota, maybe you didn't commit enough resources to the job. Because here's the thing, when I committed my three technicians, it wasn't because my three technicians were supposed to be the only ones working on the job. No, my three technicians were committed for 45 hours each, whatever they can get done in those 45 hours. And then they said that my technicians didn't even all do 45 hours because they worked 10 hour days. And the fifth day, one of my guys came in for half a day. Well, I've got the hours for all my technicians. They all worked over 45 hours within the first four days. They all did. I've got the time cards to prove it. They all racked in more than, more than 45 hours within the first four days. So the fifth day was a complete bonus. And we knew that going into the deal that based on the schedule, that if my guys worked late, that it was going to be, we are going to be in the hole on the amount of hours that we're paying versus what we're charging. We knew that. But because of the situation, because of the immediacy, we said, okay, we're going to accept it. This is, you know, this is our cost or what we're expecting. This is what they're paying. Um, let's, let's just do this. And that's what I told my team leader who went out there. I said, this is what we need to happen, man. Just make it happen, please. So, um, on top of all that, they also came over and was asking for help from my team because Phoebe is well known for working on blenders, oxygen blenders. So this well-known company came over to my team, was also asking them about oxygen blenders and how to calibrate stuff that wasn't calibrating properly. So they helped them out with that too. And then... Here they give me this list of reasons why they're not paying. And one of them was that my, my people were, uh, they lacked proficiency. That's what they said. They lacked proficiency to meet the quota. Lacked proficiency. Any of you that have touched Alaris pumps, you already know that this was a bad deal. Um, it was a bad deal because to have those four things, it was going to take a lot of time. And, but we did it. We got it done. Yeah, they had to commit extra technicians, but here it is. It's almost May, and they haven't paid me for a job that was done the week before Christmas. So, guys, this is bad business. This is bad business. They burned me. Because they burned me, this company will never be featured in any of my videos. In fact, even in my recent MD Expo video, like I was walking through and I, I recorded everything and then in post, 
because I was getting burned because they were making me look bad in front of my entire company because I was the only one that stood up and said, we're going to help them. I, I edited their footage right out of the video. And anybody from this company that sees my walkthrough video, they're going to be like, hey, wait a minute. Why did you cut our company out? I cut you out because you're burning me. You're burning the bridge with me. Not just with Phoebe, with me. So I will never, ever talk about this company again for even, even pulling these kind of antics with me. The fact that I helped you out of an emergency. I'm up at 2 o'clock in the morning making this video because you pissed me off that badly. So guys, this is bad business. Don't be like this company. And I'm not going to say this company's name because, again, I think that that's garbage when companies thrash each other. I still think it's garbage, even though I have all the proof to back up these claims. But just don't be like this company. If somebody extends an olive branch and comes to your aid in your hour of need, don't mess with them. Don't burn a bridge. How ridiculous. Guys, we are better than this as a community. Thanks for watching, guys.